Welcome to this targeted oncology presentation on the evolving role of JAK inhibitors and myelofibrosis and beyond. I'm Dr. Rami Kumrukji, Vice Chair and Section Head of Leukemia MDS at Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, Florida. Joining me today is my colleague, Dr. Fitri Bose, Associate Professor of the Department of Leukemia in the Division of Cancer Medicine at University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. In recent years, the identification of pathways and molecular targets have paved the way for the emergence of JAK inhibition for the treatment of myelofibrosis and other diseases. Today, we'll discuss the mechanism of action of available JAK inhibitors, their evolving role in the treatment landscape of myeloproliferative neoplasms. Thank you for joining us, and let's begin. Pretty Thank welcome you, Rami. to Orlando. Good to see you. Thank you. Same here. So, do you mind giving us a brief overview of myeloproliferative diseases, the role of the JAK stat pathway, uh, and where are the current unmet needs in treatment? Sure. Um, so the, the classic MPNs are polycythemia vera, essential thrombocythemia, and primary myelofibrosis. And uh, polycythemia vera and essential thrombocythemia can also progress to myelofibrosis. Uh, sometimes we call that secondary myelofibrosis. Uh, the JAK-STAT pathway is actually universally activated in all the classic MPNs. So regardless of uh, the driver mutation status, uh, most patients uh, with polycythemia vera will have a mutation in JAK2. Um, in fact, virtually everybody, about 99% will have some mutation in JAK2, mostly V617F, some will have X112. In ET and uh, primary myelofibrosis, about 60% will have the JAK2 V617F mutation, about 30% or 20 to 30% will have a mutation in CalR in X19, and a few percent, about 5%, will have a mutation in MIPL, uh, usually W515. Uh, there, there are a few cases that are triple negative, which means that they don't have any of these identified driver mutations. Right. I totally agree. And I think you bring important points. One is mentioning that the JAK stat pathway is universally the, the hallmark or the activation of the pathway is the hallmark in the disease. Exactly. And I think always a point I try to make is the activation could be not just because of the mutations, but because of the excessive signaling through the pathway. And I still get asked the question, if somebody is JAK2 negative, can they uh, be helped using JAK2 inhibitors? And the answer obviously is yes for that. Exactly. Um, the way I also see sometimes the unmet need or like the way that I try to decide on management for patient is really looking at what's the clinical you know, burden of the disease. I think most of the patients have the splenomegaly constitutional symptoms. Some patients have cytopenia. It gets more challenging when they are combined together or the accelerated phase of the disease. And that's how I try to think of the, the management for those patients. Right, it's a needs-oriented approach. Absolutely. 